This enclosure will allow us to install SSDs, M.2 and reach speeds up to 7000 megabytes per second, which is the fastest as today on the speeds that I've achieved on an external enclosure for SSDs. Actually, faster than the SSDs that we will find inside the Mac Mini M4 Pro, for example, which is a great choice to have our external SSD as a main boot drive and instead of spending a lot of money on the internal SSD I can have it here and a few years later if I sell my Mac I don't need to sell the internal SSD actually it will be sold but my investment on the SSD will remain with me which is a great advantage and something that I've been doing for the past 15 years or so. It's called Akasis TB501 Pro and it's incredibly easy to use. Now inside the box you will find a manual, an accessory for mounting smaller SSDs just in case we want, two thermal pads, the Thunderbolt 5 cable and the enclosure is all made of aluminium so really well built the only part that it's not aluminium is on the inside we have some plastics right over here and of course the electronic components but everything else really well built it also has here some holes for the ventilation system thunderbolt 5 port and this button right over here so that we can turn on and off the fan manually but there's also a automatic mode which we will see in just a few moments now to install the ssd we just need to pull this latch to open really easy insert the ssd use the rubber to support and hold it in place and that's it i'm using here a sabrent rocket 5 which is a killer for this setup especially because it is a pci 5.0 which can reach speeds up to 14,000 megabytes per second but nonetheless let's check it out we have placed the ssd inside the akasis enclosure 80 gigabits and we can see it right over here on the explorer but let's do a speed test so select target drive let's go for mac mini akasis 80 gigabit let's start and boom there we go 6000 megabytes per second and this is not the highest that i've seen now we are connected to a mac mini m4 pro which has thunderbolt 5 at the back so we will be able to reach the maximum of the connectivity which is 80 gigabits but of course we are limited by that connection which we will never reach those speeds this is not the highest that i've seen i've seen about 7000 megabytes per second which is really awesome on this particular enclosure and if we compare this with results that we get from the internal ssd on the mac mini let's do that right over here so select target mac mini let's go for the internal ssd users and shared and let's do on this folder let's open it up and there we go 5500 megabytes per second 5000 more or less on the read side so it is inferior to the speeds that we get from an external ssd so if we want to upgrade uh, our internal uh, ssd to an external we can do at great speeds and this reminds me of about 10 or 12 years ago when we had mechanical hard drives on Mac units and then we connected SSDs as external units and we had better speeds so we use the external as an internal this is really awesome so let's go back to the external SSD just for one more test this is the Acasis 80 gigabit let's open it up and there we go 6000 megabytes it seems that it's the minimum right over here and the maximum that I've seen about 7000 so great speeds now one more thing that I would like to show you is that this as a internal fan which hasn't started yet and it only starts if we are at 55 degrees Celsius or above it will start automatically to cool it down it has the intake right over here but if we press the button for about one second I guess yeah it's about half a second something like that it did start the fan now I would say that if we are in a really silent environment as we are right over here then we will notice and it's something that it's not annoying but we can definitely hear it but if I'm doing something if I'm talking just talking it will just um, complete the or almost completely make this noise disappear and if I'm listening to audio from a video editing session or something like that then this is nothing at all but just to mention that if we reach above 55 degrees Celsius, then the uh, enclosure itself will automatically start the fan. And then when we lower from 40 degrees Celsius or below, it will shut down the uh, fan automatically as well. But of course, we can shut it down and turn it on 
uh, manually just as I did. Now at this moment I changed the connection and it's not connected directly to the Mac Mini M4 Pro, it's connected to this display. This is the Philips uh, Brilliance 5K, it's an awesome display that I've been using for a few weeks, I will try to leave a link down below, but it doesn't have Thunderbolt 5, it has Thunderbolt 4 which is awesome for a display. But let's go and do a speed test, so let's select the drive and let's start it up. So just out of curiosity, if you are wondering if you can use this on a Thunderbolt 4 device instead of 5, then you can. Probably you have a Thunderbolt 5 at work and Thunderbolt 4 at home, and these are the speeds that you are going to get with Thunderbolt 4. Of course, here we are connected via the display and then from the display to the Mac Mini, so there might be a few losses instead of using directly to a MacBook Pro or Mac Mini with Thunderbolt 4. But I would suspect that these are the speeds that we will reach, 3000 megabytes per second, which is something that we have seen on previous devices with Thunderbolt 4. But to answer those questions that will be, hey, can I use it on a lower Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3? Yes, we can. We will be just limited to the device that we are using. So as we could see on Thunderbolt 5, we could reach 6,500, 7,000 megabytes per second. Here we are reaching 3,000 megabytes more or less. And, but we can use it and that's that's just awesome. This makes this enclosure the fastest enclosure that we have tested so far over the years and this makes it faster than the internal SSD on the Mac Mini M4 Pro which reaches about 5,500 and here we got a maximum of 7,000 megabytes per second, roughly 6,500 on average but nonetheless faster. Now a few years ago, 15 years ago, what we did when we had mechanical hard drives inside these machines we used external SSDs, SATA SSDs back then with 600 megabytes per second which were about three times faster than the internal hard drives as a main boot drive and at this moment we can have this as a main boot drive and although we will not notice that much of a difference because we are talking about 6500 megabytes per second or 5500 and although it's 1000 megabytes per second one to another we don't notice on normal tasks unless we use big files to transfer here and there but the biggest advantage is that if I want I can purchase a base model Mac mini with 512 uh, gigabytes in this particular case the Mac mini M4 Pro and then I can purchase one of these of two terabytes and instead of of wasting 750 euros more or less on the increase from 512 to 2 terabytes I will be able to do that at a fraction of a price this enclosure is about 200 euros and then I will have 500 euros to spend on the SSD that I want the biggest advantage in my opinion is that later on four, five years later, when I decide to sell my Mac, I will not lose the investment on my SSD, which is something that will be really difficult to sell, even if you have a big capacity SSD. I'm still using Thunderbolt 4 SSDs for all my work. And when it's time to upgrade my Mac Studio or my Mac Mini, I sell it without any issues whatsoever. And I can keep on working without any issues whatsoever and without devaluating the investment that I did. But this is my opinion, this is what I've been doing for the past few years. Now just one more example before we go, if I want to upgrade the Mac Mini M4 Pro from 512 to 8 terabytes, I will have to pay about 3000 euros, which is something that I wouldn't do. But if I buy a Sabrent 8 terabytes, I will spend about 1000 euros. And Sabrent is one of the top-notch brands with prices accordingly and even then I'm paying only a third of the price that I would with the original Apple SSDs. But I can even go on another route. If I go to a cheaper SSD like the WD Black SN 850X, 8 terabytes, which at this moment costs around 680 euros, meaning less than one third of the investment that I needed to make if I wanted to upgrade the internal SSD. And in my particular case, I have no issues whatsoever in having a cable connected to my Mac Mini, which I can just hide the enclosure if I want, or I can have it right over here, like I do have at the back on my Mac Studio. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, hopefully you've enjoyed to meet the Akashish TB501 Pro, which is really, really awesome, especially on the speed side of things. If you did, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.